Hello, I'm Baronesa Isabella Maria Vasquez de Granada y Cortes. I'm from the Shire of Minas Gwyn, which is in the Principality of Insula Draconis, which is part of the Great Kingdom of Drachenwald. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a Tudor wrapped button. These are the materials you're going to need in order to make a Tudor wrapped button. As you can see, there are not too many things. This is the button that we're going to make. These lines of thread, almost as if it is a spider web, and they are wrapped around the spines of the button. So it's a circular bead under here, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the spines, and then we will wrap the thread around the spines. So what we need to do this are we need some beads. Now these are 1.2 centimeter beads, so 12 millimeter beads with a two millimeter hole through the center. They are easily available from online retailers of your choice or you can go into craft shops or even occasionally toy shops and find these. I'd recommend having a relatively small hole like this because although it makes it a little bit more difficult to get the thread through on the needle at times, it means that you end up with a far more closed button in the end. The other thing you're going to need will be thread. This is straightforward thick crochet thread. It's the thicker pearl perle, however you wish to pronounce it, um, crochet cotton or perle embroidery thread. And this comes in lots of different colours and you're going to need about a metre and a half of this. You will need scissors. for cutting the thread. You will need a pair of pliers. Now, the pliers are really useful for grabbing hold of the needle when it gets difficult to push through. So you want flat nose pliers. Again, you can pick these up in craft stores or tool stores. You shouldn't have any problem finding them. You can do it without the pliers, but it's a bit tricky sometimes to get the needle to pull through. The final thing, of course, you're going to need is a needle. Now, as you can see, it's a needle with quite a large eye. This is so that you can just thread the thick crochet cotton through it. So it's a fairly sturdy needle. Um, being pointed helps. So it is better to use a pointed needle rather than a blunt tapestry needle because sometimes you need to pick the thread up and squeeze underneath one of the spines and it's a lot easier to do that with a sharp needle than it is to do with a blunt. So what do we need to do? Let's get that out of the way. First thing we need is we need about 1.2 meters of thread. 1.2 to 1.5 depends on the size of the button. Um, if you go to two meters you're probably going too far. You will have some left but it is much better to have more thread than you need than to try to add in extra new thread. So I'm just going to thread my needle. I've now threaded my needle and we're ready to go. So let's take these out of the way and select one of those beads. So first thing we need to do is we need to put the needle through the hole and pull in the thread. OK, you don't want to pull it all the way. I would leave about 
uh, five, five to eight centimetres, so two inches or so of tail that you can hang on to. It really does, it really does help to hang on to this thing. I'm now going to thread it into through the hole again and what I'm going to do now is this is giving me the first of my spines. I'm going to make eight spines and the reason for it being eight is that that means it's relatively easy to create the button to do the thread wrapping but it gives us a good coverage. In period portraits, in Tudor portraits, we see buttons that have anything from 6 to about 12 spines. The number of spines is quite important because the further apart the spines are, the more difficult it is to get coverage of the button with the wrapping thread. So it helps to be able to have quite a few of them to start with. If you're working with a thin thread, I'd recommend you have more spines so there are shorter areas to cover between the spines. But I have found that with this particular weight of thread, eight spokes works perfectly well. Now you'll notice I'm not making these spokes by starting here and then doing the next and the next and the next and the next. What I'm doing is I am doing opposite spokes. This just makes it a little bit easier to make sure that they are even because when you start actually stitching the wrapping thread in, they will become a little bit uneven. So if that happens, don't worry about it. It is perfectly normal. So I've now got the first four spines in. You can see the spines there and I can now start putting the the spines in between to get the other four spines. Now at this point we have put quite a lot of thread through the centre of our button. So you may find that this is when you start using your pliers. So you, I can still get that one through, that's fine. Now I've got six of those. I'll just put my final two in. And at this point, it's becoming a little bit difficult to push it through. So this is where I'm going to get my pliers and I'm going to hold the needle with the pliers and pull that through. And that makes it a lot easier to work with. Now you'll have to use your thumbnail. I, I tend to use my thumbnail to even these up. And then I've just got the, the final eighth one to put in and that will definitely need the pliers. So you can use the pliers to push just as much as you can use the pliers to pull. And there we go. That's the pliers. So I've now got That's it. I've now got eight spokes. You can see it's nice and clear. We've got eight spokes all the way around. And you notice that I have pushed the spokes apart so that they are nice and evenly dispersed. This is important because if it's evenly dispersed to start with, then you're going to have fewer problems with them getting too close together that it's difficult to stitch. The stitching is quite simple. What you are doing is you're taking the needle and you are going underneath one of the spokes and then passing it through. Then you go underneath the same spoke a second time and that locks the thread in place. Now, again, tweak that so it's a bit so it's more even you rotate the bead and you go under the next spoke 
and you always go under a spoke twice. You go under it the first time to lock the traversing sp thread in place and you go under it the second time to wrap the traversing thread around the spoke itself. So you're just going around and every time you come to a spoke, you're going under it twice. This is really simple, so it is not a difficult button to make. Now these appear quite a lot in Tudor portraiture. They are most often worked in silk, but if you're working with silk, as I said, you want to look at having rather more spokes. The nice thing with this button, if you do it with this heavy crochet thread, is that it will work up in about 30 to 40 minutes. And this is, this is your first time round, if you like. I can do one of these in about 20 minutes if I'm sitting in a very boring meeting on Zoom. But as you can see, all I'm doing is I'm going round and round and every spoke every every spoke I come to I am doing two wraps. Notice that I'm using the point to pick up underneath the spoke. This is why I said a pointed needle is a lot easier to work with. Now this will happen from time to time. You'll develop a knot in your thread, but it's OK because you can generally pull those out, particularly when you're working with a heavier thread like this. You can now start to see that we can see the spokes appearing. We're starting to get the pattern of the spokes and the flat thread between them. Once we've got this far, we can take off this thread at the end. So all you need to do is cut it off. Cut it off close to the bead itself. And then once you've done that, you're just going to keep on going, keep on wrapping. Now, what I'm noticing here is things are getting a little bit uneven. Don't worry too much about this. It's not a problem because we've got eight of these spoke threads, which means that we're not going to leave any areas that are too open to cover with the main passing thread, the traversing thread. If it does get a little bit uneven, try to vary the tension a bit so that you can pull pull spokes a little bit closer together or you can relax them a little. As I said though, in general, it's not going to be a big problem and your tension will improve with practice. One of the nice things about this thread is that it covers the bead quickly and evenly. As you can see, we don't have many problems with gaps. You do get problems occasionally with it knotting up like this, but if you can just undo it, it's fine. So we've now reached the middle of the bead and at this point, the length of the traversing bits here are going to get a bit shorter each time. Until now, they've been getting a little bit longer each time. Whoops. When this happens, we have to be a little bit careful because if you can see this little gap here, as the traversing threads get a little bit shorter, they want to move in this direction. 
So you have to start pushing them down a little bit when you put in your traversing thread. So you'll notice that as I do this, I'm pushing this back a bit because this allows me to maintain a nice, thick, dense coverage. And of course, occasionally this will tense up. And that's just because of the way the thread is twisted in the first place. One of the things you can do if you feel your thread is getting too twisted is just hold the whole thing up via the needle and then let the whole thing untwist. And that will take some of the extra twist out of your needle. Again, now we're just going round and round and it's going to get narrower and narrower as we get closer to the other end of the bead. Notice how the amount of space we've got to put the needle through is getting smaller. This means it can be a little bit more fiddly to get the needle into the right place, but it's not too bad until we get right towards the end. And now we can see there's really not very much space for the thread to go around. So it is becoming a lot trickier to pick up the right thread. It helps at this point if instead of bringing the needle in horizontally, so perpendicular to the spoke, you bring it in almost parallel to the spoke and then you can pick up underneath. There we go. OK, so we've covered the whole thing. We've got a nice button. The final thing we need to do is finish off the thread. So we're just going to push it back through here and this is another point at which we're going to need the pliers. So use the pliers to push and then use the pliers again to pull. And at this point you may have to pull quite hard because there is a lot of thread going through that central. When you, when you put your final stitch to hold it, make sure you come over another thread. So you're not going to go down into the same hole that the thread has made. And this final one is being really quite hard to do. The fact that it's quite hard to do means that you're getting a nice solid end with the thread. The thread is not going to come out. Friction is holding it very tightly in place. Then all we have to do is snip off this final thread close to the edge and there we have it. We have our completed button. A Tudor wrapped button with eight spokes.